Hey everyone, what's going on? Chances are, if you stumbled onto this clip, then you've got some bad audio that you need fixing. There is nothing more amateur than having bad audio in your production. You know, if it's something as simple as like a Facebook video or an Instagram video, straight up to like an indie movie or something, bad audio really ruins the experience. There's nothing that grates people's ear worse than having bad audio. So if you come to the right video, I'm gonna show you two different pieces of audio that I'm gonna fix here. The techniques are very simple. Once you practice them, they'll get better and better over time. Time. It's really not hard, so just stick with the tutorial, rewind it if you need to. Uh, maybe some of the new concepts will take you a little bit of time. But trust me, once you do this a little bit, it really only takes 30 to 60 seconds and it'll get some bad audio sounding much, much better. So let's not waste any time, let's get straight into it. All right, so here's my uh, DaVinci Resolve timeline. I've got two clips here that we're gonna be working with. Uh, the first one is just audio. The second one's some audio and video. Now I've duplicated the tracks here because I want to keep the originals intact and we're going to be messing with all the audio here and here. So let's jump into the Fairlight tab and start editing the audio. The first thing you're going to want to do is listen to the audio and see what it sounds like first. So let's take a listen of this sample track. Now this is actually a really good time to do a sample recording because as you can probably hear in the background, someone is just going... Okay, so to me, there's definitely some background noise going on and the audio sounds a little bit thin, like there's a little bit too much top end. So I'm gonna go to track one here. This represents track one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna add uh, the noise reduction plugin. So what this does is it analyzes the audio and it's gonna to attempt to take away some of that jargon. So just find a blank I'll area that you have in a track. I always leave a little bit when I record to uh, do this exact method. So just hit learn. I'm just gonna play this little bit of the track just so it can uh, assess the audio. That's all you need, just a little bit of a track and let's play it back. And listen to the original. Big difference. Now, this is actually a really good time to Okay, so the next piece of the lifting that we're gonna be doing is in this EQ tab, so let's bring this up. Now change all the EQ styles. You can only do it bands two to five, change them all to this EQ style and just whack up all the Q factors. I'll show you what this does in a sec. So let's look at band three. Uh, we've got our gain here, which goes up and down. The Q factor just widens or narrows what we're gonna attack and then the frequency just sweeps it left and right. Now what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the bad frequencies and we're gonna take them away, we're gonna reduce them. So let's sweep through this clip and let's find some really offending sounds. Now, this is actually a really good time to do a sample recording because as you can probably hear in the background. Straight up, this, this first one here is just, when it sounds like it's you're underneath a cave, that's what we're really looking for. So now that we've found it, I'm just gonna dip it by say uh, five to 10 dB, depending how bad it is. I'm just gonna run through the track and do it uh, three more times. Now, this is actually a really good time to do a sample record. Ooh, that's, that's really bad. Because as you can probably hear in the background, someone is just going crazy with the lawnmower. So I'm recording this on an iPhone. On the top end, you're always going to hear this sort of sizzle. My phone about uh, 20 centimeters away from my face, just holding it. But it's when you really hear that cave sort of sound, that's when it's really bad. Phone. Let's see how well we can scrub up this audio. That sort of sound. Now, this is actually a really good time to do a sample recording. Because as you can probably hear in the background, someone is just going crazy with the lawnmower. So I'm recording this on an iPhone about uh, 20 centimeters away from my face, just holding the phone. Let's I don't want to reduce too much of the bass because it's already a bit of a thin sounding clip. So even though we uh, can hear some offending frequencies here, I'm just trying to be mindful not to go too crazy. Otherwise the overall sound will be like an old timey radio. It'll just be very thin sounding. So I will take it away, but just a little bit here. Now, this is actually a really good time to do a sample recording because as you can probably hear in the background. Okay, that's sounding pretty decent for now. I'm going to chuck a compressor on here. Um, let's take a look at the volume. Now, this is actually a really good time to do a sample recording because as you can probably hear in the background. So the bottom level of the voice is around generally around minus 15, maybe minus 17. So I'm going to change our threshold to the, say about that, minus 17. For voice, three to one is just pretty average, so I'll just leave it there. 
Oh, this is actually a really good time to do a sample recording because as you can probably just a quick explanation of what a compressor does is if you just look at the waves here uh, this one's pretty big that one's pretty small it's going to try and level out the audio so that it doesn't kind of come and go uh, it re reduces the, the it reduces the dynamics of the audio so there are many situations where you do want the sound going up and down but for voice and recordings and that sort of thing uh, you try and you, you really want a compressed sound like a radio voice so it's all flush when you're speaking you don't want the listener to kind of have to turn things up up and down okay so you probably won't even notice the uh, compressor in action too much but let's take a listen now this is actually a really good time to do a sample recording because as you can probably hear in the background <laughs> all right so let's uh compare the original to the one we've just edited now so i'm just going to cut this up So now let's take a listen to the original track compared to the one we've edited. Now this is actually a really good time to do a sample recording because as you can probably hear in the background, someone is just going crazy with the lawnmower. So I'm recording this on an iPhone about uh, 20 centimeters away from my face just holding the phone. Let's see how well we can scrub up this. So you can see here with a little bit of editing, a bit of an EQ tweak, a bit of the things that we've just gone through, you can definitely make the sound a little bit better than what the original one was. Now I wasn't actually too happy with this end result, it is usable, but I think we can do a little bit more. We're going to have to go a little bit more of an advanced route here, but let's see what more we can do to this. So we'll go back to Fairlight. Now if you notice in the EQ tab, unfortunately there's only one EQ that we can apply to a track. I really wish I could apply more EQs, but they're only giving us six bands. And these end bands don't have this same EQ style. So I've only really got four EQs that I can uh, play with, but I, I really want a few more. A little tip we can do is uh, bust the audio. I'm not going to explain this too much. But if you go into the Fairlight dropdown, go to bus format. Let's add a submix. It's fine. So then we're going to open up our bus assign window. You can see we've got our new track here. It's a sub track. And we're going to apply this iPhone track to this sub bus. So click on sub. So now this iPhone track is uh, getting routed to the sub and then the sub is getting routed to the main track. I totally get this can be a little bit confusing, but just follow what I've done here and let's keep moving forward. So what this effectively is going to allow us to do is have an EQ on this track here, the original track, but we can also apply a second EQ to this sub track. So let's go through and do the exact same process, but maybe on a second sweep we can clean this up a little bit better than it already is now. Now this is actually a really good time to do a sample recording because as you can probably hear in the background, someone is just going crazy with the lawnmower. So I'm recording this on an iPhone about uh, 20 centimeters away from my face, just holding the phone. Let's see how well we can scrub up this audio. Now, this is actually a really good time to do a sample recording because as you can probably hear in the background, someone is just going crazy with the lawnmower. So I'm recording this on an iPhone about uh, 20 centimeters away from my face, just holding the phone. Let's see how well we can scrub up. And now, this is actually a really good time to do a sample recording because as you can probably hear in the background, someone is just going crazy with the lawnmower. So I'm recording this on an iPhone about uh, 20 centimeters away from my face. Just Okay, so we've got our second EQ here. Let's take another listen from the uh, original to the, uh, to the one we just edited. All right, let's take a listen. Now, this is actually a really good time to do a sample recording because as you can probably hear in the background, someone is just going crazy with the lawnmower. So I'm recording this on an iPhone about uh, 20 centimeters away from my face, just holding the phone. Let's see how well we can scrub. Now that to me is a lot better recording in the end. We've taken something that was very, very unlistenable and fixed it to make it a lot, lot better. Now those advanced things we did with the sub bus, I generally don't ever need to do that. That's just something I had to do with this piece of audio um, because I just felt the original results weren't quite there. But for something like the next clip, we can just do the basic steps. So let's go through this and see how much quicker it can be. So I've got it on these two tracks, A3 and 4, uh, the original and then the one we're going to mess with. So let's jump into Fairlight and take a look at this. All right, so for this test, I'm just going to be using the uh, the Rode Wireless Go. I'm just going to handhold it. Uh, I used to do a lot of recordings um, with the Rode Wireless Go. 
See, in this clip, I'm not noticing any sort of background noise, so there's no point adding the noise remover. It'll just attempt to get rid of some junk and really degrade the original sound. So let's just hit it with the EQ. We'll find these bad frequencies and uh, fix them up and hear how, how it sounds against the original. Alright, so for this test, I'm just going to be using the, uh, the Rode Wireless Go. I'm just going to handhold it. Uh, I used to do a lot of recordings um, with the Rode Wireless Go just attached on my shirt here. But I was actually fixing the audio quite a fair bit, so I ended up getting a little lav mic that uh, hooks into the Rode Wireless Go. But anyway, let's uh, let's clean up the audio on this and see what it sounds like freehand. Rode Wireless Go just attached on my shirt here. But I was actually fixing the audio quite a fair bit, so I ended up getting a little lav mic that uh, hooks into the Rode Wireless Go. But anyway, let's uh, let's clean up the audio on this and see what it sounds like freehand uh, before and after we uh, with the Rode Wireless Go just attached on my shirt here. But I was actually fixing the audio quite a fair bit, so I ended up getting a little lav mic that uh, hooks into the Rode Wireless Go. But anyway, let's uh, let's clean up the audio on this and see. Cool. So that's actually sounding pretty good. We'll chuck the uh, the compressor on there. So three to one again with the Rode Wireless Go just attached on my shirt here. But I was actually fixing the audio quite a fair bit, so I ended up getting a little lav mic. Okay, let's take a listen to the original compared to the one we just edited. Alright, so for this test, I'm just going to be using the uh, the Rode Wireless Go. I'm just going to handhold it. Uh, I used to do a lot of recordings um, with the Rode Wireless Go just attached on my shirt here. But I was actually fixing the audio quite a fair bit, so I ended up getting a little lav mic that uh, hooked. You can probably tell here the results are a lot more subtle because the original source was actually pretty good as it is. But generally, any microphone I uh, record with, there's always some dirt that we can take away using this EQ method. So there we go, those are the tips and tricks for getting your bad audio sounding much, much better. You can see there on that first clip, uh, we needed to go and do the additional EQ processing. And that's really a testament that like no two pieces of audio are ever gonna be the same. You're always gonna have slightly different challenges with your audio. But that second piece of audio that I dealt with, that's way more normal. Just a quick EQ, compressor, maybe even a limiter, depending how loud it gets. Just a few small things can make your audio sound a lot better. If you're having any trouble doing this process yourself, drop some comments below i'll get to it maybe somebody else will get to it we'll try and figure out what's going on for you so once again thanks for sticking around to the end of the video smash that like and subscribe button if you haven't already and we'll catch you on the next one